What's up, everybody? I'm Dave Miranda, and this is episode 138 of Just Give Me Five. I hope you guys are doing great, continuing to be amazing. We got a really, really awesome show lined up for you today. But first things first, I need you to hit that like button, I need you to hit that subscribe, and I need you to spread the word about Just Give Me Five. All right. I want to say happy holidays to everybody. I hope you guys are good with some family, friends, your loved ones. And, uh, you know, just, you know, all the good foods, all the good eats and all that. You know, I hope everybody's just, just at peace. You know what I mean? That's all I can ask for. So, you know, we just wish you guys nothing but the best in that. If you guys caught episode 137, you saw we had none other than my man Aaron Kelly, a.k.a. Catalyst. And let me tell you, boy, man, you know, that, you know, like I was saying earlier, man, like that, it, it was one, it was a situation where I didn't, I didn't necessarily like doubt that it wasn't going to be you know, a great interview, of course, because everybody that we book for the show has a story, has something, you know, to them that is always dynamic and, you know, and unique. But man, I'll tell you, man, me and Jimmy talked after we filmed and it was like, yo, Aaron, like, that was a really, really great interview. I learned so much from the guy, man. And, um, you know, he's got a really, really very interesting story. And, uh, you know, he is just such a good guy, you know, really good dude, man, you know, does a lot for the community out here. And, uh, you know, we were just uh, truly happy and honored to have him on our platform. Um, you know, shout out to you again, my brother. Thank you so much, you know, for blessing us like you did. And, uh, you know, I, I wish you nothing but the best with your speakeasy events, um, everything, all your other endeavors that you have going on. And, um, you know, just uh, keep fighting the good fight, man. Uh, thank you again. You know, so make sure you guys watch episode 137. All right. But today's guest has been a huge part of the Arizona entertainment culture for so many years now. We're going to talk about what got him into acting, as well as some of the incredible roles he's played, including Better Call Saul, Yellowstone, and so much more. We're also going to get into some memorable moments and everything else. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I present to you, Sean Dillingham. Hey, this is Sean Dillingham. All I'm saying is just give me five. I think it started when I was a kid. It's cliche, but it, it's true. I in uh, in grade school I was I was painfully shy. I mean, I mean run away from school shy. Okay. And uh, you didn't like any interaction. No, I you know the bell would ring, we'd have to go into the hallway, and I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. and so uh, it was the annual uh, school play, and the teacher was uh, you're going to be in the play, and I was like I don't want to be in the play, and she was like everybody's going to be in the play. I don't care if you're a tree, right. you're going to be in the play. Right. There was no option, and so I, uh, I was in the play. And for some reason, the way my mind worked, I was like, this isn't me on stage, it's this character. Yeah. And I let loose, and I just, I fell into the character, and I got audience response. Right. You know, they were laughing when they should have laughed, they were clapping when they should have clapped, and I was like, this is it. Yeah. So through school, it was, you know, theater and drama, and then I got into, community theater after school and I got into semi-professional theater mm -hmm. and then I realized uh, I really liked performing but I really hated rehearsing so I got into improv groups and then got into a, an agent saw me at, at a play production one time and said if you'll do that you'll do anything and signed me on to be uh, one of her actors and started acting in commercials and TV shows and movies and everything. Do you remember like the first commercial you did? I remember, I remember distinctly the first commercial because it was a regional, it was for a bank, a regional commercial. It played across a couple of different states. But this is what was nice about it. Okay. It was humbling. Okay. And I needed to be humbled early on. Okay. Because prior to that, I thought actors were like, okay, everyone, right. the actors here, yeah. <laughs> give me some room and don't make eye contact. And I got there and they were like, your call time when you show up is about 11 a.m. And I go, okay. So I showed up and I was 21. Okay. And I walked onto this set and these gigantic hulking men, yeah. huge grips, pulled me aside and they were like, hey, look, monkey boy, 
We've been here since five this morning building these sets and we want to go to lunch. So don't screw around and don't screw up your lines and let's rock and roll. And I was like, yes, sir. You've got it. You bet. <laughs> and after that, I realized at that point, I realized the actor is probably the least important thing. It's the guys who are building the set. It's the guys that are lighting it. It's the mic guys. It's the camera guys. And, and it made me realize that you are just one cog in a much larger machine. So be a team player. Absolutely. We have no room for superstars. Absolutely. And you come on there with an attitude and it's just, it's just gonna be awkward and uncomfortable for everybody, so. Right. Yeah, and that was one of my first, that was I think my first commercial experience. And I'm glad it happened that way. It's an early humbling experience, you know, to where you, you know, you're 21 years old, you're at a point where like nobody could tell me nothing, right? Right? You know what sure. I mean? It's like it's the like, ignorance of youth. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Um, so no, that's good. I think a lot of people need that. You know, they do because I've worked with some omitting names, but I've worked with some individuals that maybe had fame at one time. It subsided, and then they have another opportunity to be in a movie or a TV show, and they they grasp for the same um, uh, things they were allotted when they had that fame. Right. I, I will only drink this kind of water. Yeah. Well, here's a bottle of, no, 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 I only drink uh, Perrier. Right. That's what I was and I was just like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I was just like, who are you? Right. You don't even, you won't drink this water, the, the commoner's water. Right. And I was just yeah. like, oh. So, and then I, did, so then when did like the, you know, film, like when did that start? When did that kick off? You know, it started with just uh, smaller independent films around the same time. I had opportunities to do things and it exposed me to the differences of commercial, being a commercial actor, being a film actor, being a television actor, because there are three different aspects to all of them. Very true. You know, uh, commercials are usually, we're shooting this in a day yeah. or in a couple of hours. Right. Boom, 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 30 seconds, sell the product, smile, look at the camera. TV, you have a little more leeway. Uh, film can be, you know, films can, can sometimes take two, three months to make. You have time to, if you want to really get into character. Right. Even though I've wanted to do more commercials, the world has changed. Yeah. Character, you know, commercials are not as frequent as they used to be for me. Yeah. Uh, television, I'd love to do television because television pay is great. Because it's seasons. It's seasons and it's, it's sort of like a regular ongoing job, yeah. especially if you land a regular gig. I get a lot of co-stars. Pop in and be the bad guy. Pop in and do this. Pop in and do that. Yeah. Phil, even though I, I never sought it out, I seem to be getting more film work than anything. Wow. And people like me as the bad guy because I do this voice. Hey, let's go. Yeah, I like it. So, and the people say that all the time. Oh, I love your voice. I'm like, thanks, not my voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can just turn it on like, all right, everybody, here we go. Here's right. the deal. We're doing this, and we're doing it now. Right, now you're Christian Bale and, and they're, Yeah, they're like, I like that intensity. And I'm like, right. eh, thanks. Tell us about some of the, the shows and the, and the films you've been in. Because you've, you've been in some, some pretty stellar TV yeah, shows, man. Yeah, for about the last seven, eight years, I've had a pretty pretty good run two or three regular television shows a year it started with night shift which was nbc then longmire which i yeah. think was netflix and then i got um brooklyn 99 this is us there's johnny which was like uh, uh roger bart tony danza paul reiser nice. um <clears throat> and i got um better call saul which is great because I wanted to be in that Breaking Bad universe. And that's the prequel, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, Walker Independence. And then just last night I watched my episode. I'm on this new one on Hulu called um, A Murder at the End of the World. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's a big one out right now. So yeah. I've been pretty lucky. I've been lucky also in the sense that I, I, I never watch the shows that I get cast on. Oh. Like I got Brooklyn Nine-Nine and my kids were like, you got oh my. Andy Samberg, are you, yeah. and I was like, never watched it. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know who you're talking about. And so, and, and that helps, because yeah. I don't go out there and I'm like, <laughs> I'm, not in, I'm not intimidated. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Uh, so I go out and I enjoy it. And, uh, you know, I shot that, I was out at CBS Studios, that's where they filmed it for a week. And I was on this, this New York looking back lot. Yeah. And I looked around and I thought, God, this looks familiar, what is this? 
And finally, one of the PAs said, did you ever watch Friends or Seinfeld? And I said, yeah. And they go, "That's this is where they do all the, all the exteriors for those shows. That's and I was like, okay, thank you. Yeah, something rang a bell. Yeah. Um, but they were very, every, oh, this is us. I did this is us. That is, okay, now I want it because I want, because I was going to say, you, two, like my mother and I watched, <laughs> re religiously watched two of the shows that you were in, which yeah. is Yellowstone yeah. and This Is oh, I Us. I forgot Yellowstone. Yeah, you can't forget Yellowstone. Yeah. Um, what, um, what role did you play in This Is Us? Uh, the, uh, the lead actor, M Milo yeah. Vendimiglia, uh -huh. he, uh, he wants to earn money, so he gets involved in this poker game. Yes. And I'm one of the gangsters at the poker game that we wind up beating the crap out of him afterwards. Because he comes in and he throws down, you know, like a hundred bucks. And then he wins the hand a thousand dollars. He's like, "Okay, that's it. I'm out." And we're like, "Wait, wait, 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 wait a second. What do you mean you're out? Right. You're not going anywhere. You didn't even finish your drink, you know." And he grabs his glass. Hey, boy! And we're like, "Okay, okay." So, but the cool thing for me about that was I got to—I just hit the mic. I'm so sorry. Uh, I I got to shoot at Paramount. I got to go th through that archway at Paramount, and I'm like, this is hollowed ground. They shot Indiana Jones here. They shot Breakfast at Tiffany's here. Right. And I'm a big showbiz guy. I mean, I like the history of it, so. Oh, yeah, man. I go to those places, and I'm like, do you know what has been shot here? I shot, um, there's Johnny at, uh, they said, you're going to shoot at Red Studios. And I go, I've heard of a lot of studios. What's Red? And they're like, you know the camera, a Red camera? They make all the films, a little buy, and I go, oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of Reagan, yeah. It, it, that's, it's their studio, they bought it. I go, oh, okay. So I go there, and I look at it, and I go, why do I know this building? Yeah. This is so, I know this building. And uh, they were like, yeah, this is the former Desilu Studios. Oh I Love Lucy, Dick Van Dyke, right. Andy Griffith, it was all Star Trek shot here. Yeah. Uh, Sanford and Son shot here, the, mid the Midnight Special, I was like, oh! So for me, I'm like, that's you know I mean? hollowed ground. I Absolutely. love those places. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously you did Yellowstone. Yeah. Um, and Shot you that in, up in Utah. And that was in, that was in season two you were in? I think so. It was, it was, it was two, uh, or th two or four or three. I don't know. What, what scene was it again for the viewers that may not be? Um, I own a bar and Kevin Costner's son and ranch hands come to my bar. And forever, for whatever reason, my, uh, my bouncers beat the crap out of his son and ranch hands. So they leave and they come back with axe handles. Fair fight, it's totally fair. And uh, they beat the hell out of my guys. But before they do that, to teach me a lesson, they open up the bar doors and they let a bull in the bar, a live bull. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, and then uh, 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 Rip, Rip yeah. comes up to me and he's like, I'm like, what, what the hell, Rip? Right. expletive and he comes up and he see it's funny because I was an idiot who said you know what he ought to do is there's all these beer cans I could put one here come up and just swing at it boom and hit it right. even more intimidating yeah. well they took the suggestion but I didn't realize he was going to come up like Babe Ruth and swing that axe handle at me which was like eight inches in front of me and it caused me to jump back so that was a real reaction. And then when I, my cowboy hat hit the beer taps, it fell off and the beer taps were running down my back. Wow. But all that was, and that's the take they kept it. Wow. Because before I was like, hey, oh, hey, come on now. So that was like a real in motion stunt. Like, yeah, like, I jumped back and I was like, whoa, what? Yeah. Hey there, Brando, let's dial it down a little bit. <laughs> and it was funny because when they let the bull in, everybody was tense. Yeah. It was like, this is, real, this is a 900 pound bull now. Yeah. Big black Brahma bull, and they, right. the owner has it in the trailer, yeah. and I'm meandering back and forth, and he's got a cattle prod. And he's talking to somebody, every once in a while, he just goes with the cat, and the bull goes, Rah! he kicks the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. So on the third, I go, excuse me, sir, uh, I realize this is your property, but I have to be in there with it. Please, I, I don't want him pissed. Please, yeah. please stop doing that. Right. And the phrase, uh, like a bull in a china shop? Yeah, yeah. It's bull. It's garbage. It, 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 no one knows what they're talking about because me and this poor cameraman who's like this behind the bar, he's ducked down. I'm yeah. the, 
Everybody else is in the doorways with steel cages in front of them. So they open up the door, and this bull walks in. And everybody's like this. And the bull literally, and this Taylor Sheridan's like, the bull's going to come in. He's just going to tear it up, jump over the bar, just right. destroy the tables and chairs, everything. Just a great, epic television moment. Bull walks in, boom, open up. Bull walks through and goes like this. Wow. Collected, you know? And goes right back up into the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> and I hear, cut! And I was like, well, that was climactic, wasn't it? Right. Was, what the hell was that? <laughs> three times. He, wow. Three times they tried. And finally on the third, he goes, okay, forget it. We've got the bull coming out. We'll just, the camera will be the bull's perspective, and we'll right. just kick over the chairs and tables right. to make it look like it was the bull. Because this bull is not cooperative. It never touched a chair, a table, anything. Wow. Walked through like this. Looked at me like this. Yeah. So. <laughs> and went back into the trailer. I was just like, "What was Kevin Costner like?" Nice, yeah. quiet. It's like Andy Samberg. Yeah. You know, very nice and quiet. But you got to understand, it's the star and the. He's also the producer. Well, that's true. So they're flanked by people. Yeah. So yeah. they don't have time to really be too friendly. Right. You know, I should even say that. Sorry. I, I had an opportunity to meet somebody that I wish I had been nicer when I met him. But I had the opportunity to meet Adam Sandler. Oh, wow, okay. But I wasn't a fan of Adam Sandler. Oh, well, that So I wasn't like, Adam Sandler, wow! I was like this, I oh, don't know. And right. I think back and I go, because ah. mm. I, like I like his stuff now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That was, uh, I had the opportunity to go and kind of be on The Tonight Show at one point. I was friends with the host, who was a guy named Stuttering John Melendez. He was on Howard Stern. Yes, yes. And he yes. was he was the announcer for a while he for was. Jay Leno. He was, yep. So he said, John, you're going to come to L.A., come down and watch the show, be my guest. Yep. So the people that were on the show that night, Jay Leno, Judd Apatow, mm -hmm. Adam Sandler, they, uh, for some reason, Carrot Top came out that night. Oh, wow. And I was like, well, this is strange. Yeah, Three and then... Uh, or after? And before the show... <laughs> Stuttering John would do the uh, warm-up, the audience warm-up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he invited me up on stage to do a little, a little audience warm-up. And I got to do, do some jokes and whatnot. And nice. the one time my wife is not taking pictures of everything in the building. Wow. I got off stage. I was like, you, did you, you got me on that stage, right, doing that. And she was like, no, they said no pictures. I was like, it would have been worth getting kicked out of over. Come on. <laughs> Are you shitting me? It's a night show. Yeah. There you go. You know, it is what it is. Of all the people that I've worked with, I think that guy Milo was the nicest. He was Jack, right? Uh, yeah, on on This Is Us, yeah, and I'm sitting I'm sitting in the, the sitting in the makeup chair, yeah, man. getting done. They're getting ready to after that. I, they take me to my dressing room where they have the wardrobe, and all of a sudden these this hand these hands clamp on my shoulder. How you doing, man? We're gonna have fun today, buddy. Let's rock it out. And I look, and it's him, and I didn't know him at the time, and all I thought was. Ooh, this guy right. super nice though all the way yeah like very down to earth even at its peak he was like i think i'm gonna leave the show now wow. i'm gonna go on to do something else i want to do movies wow. and people are like what yeah, yeah. super nice guy awesome. very grounded what's um what's the like for you personally what do you feel like the joy of acting does for you everything from when I see uh, a good a good script or production that I want to be involved with, that gets me excited. Showing up uh, first day on set, you know, and it could be at an exotic locale or they've built something, and it's it's magic time. You know, you've prepared, you get into your wardrobe, everything. It, it's just the whole process, and then when it's done, I look back and I can be like, yeah, I'm. Pleased, really, really pleased. The whole process from from auditioning until after it's done, you know, and that's the tough part because when it's done, a lot of actors walk away like, okay, thanks, that's it. <clears throat> but your job continues on because you got to still help promote and market this movie, exactly. And they're going to take at least three to six months to edit it. Right. So, yep. you know, you you in 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 essence, you become a marketing partner. You've got to promote it on your social, and and they don't want to see you as that. You're not going to get any ex, any any future work yeah. if you go. Okay, thanks. I did the project later. Bye. 
you know, they want to know that you're out there going, hey, check out this movie. Yeah. It's in theaters. Go, you know. Exactly. You know who else was really nice is uh, I did a movie with B.J. Novak. Uh, uh, Vengeance. Yes, okay. okay. Really, really nice. Okay. Really, really funny. We did a bar scene where he and the other guy, I forget the other guy's name, uh, but he's walking down and I reach out and I grab B.J. Novak by the, by the uh, shirt. And on one take, I actually went and tore his shirt open. I was like, wow. luckily it was those cowboy metal snaps. I was like, sorry, sorry. But his friend that he's with, tall, skinny, blonde, good looking guy, they go walking off and me and the other actor, we're yelling at him. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you just keep walking. You just keep walking there, broke back. You just keep walking. And I hear everybody over there laugh. And they go cut and he comes walking back and he goes, who said that? Who said keep walking broke back? And, and I was just like, it was one of those oh shit moments. Uh, I did? He goes, that was funny. I'm keeping that. That was really funny, man. Really funny. He was super nice, super supportive. Because he started as an actor. Yeah, yeah. So it was his film and it was super nice, super fun. You know, and the one I saw when I was reading, when I was reading up on you, man, is the one that I, I really, really just blew my mind. Don Amici. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was filmed in Scottsdale. Jane Seymour was also in that movie. Wow. Yeah, that was one of my first movies. And Don, I was so excited because Don Amici, I'm like, this is a man who was a star in the 40s and 50s. Exactly. I mean, Don Amici, I'm like, Don Amici, Harry and the Hendersons? Right. Really? Right. But the sad part of that was he was so advanced in his years okay. that he had a hard time remembering lines and oh. from, you to me, there was a, a person off right off the camera with the lines because he could barely get through a line. Uh, today we're going to, what, what's the line? And I was like, oh, but it was great to be on set with him. The man's a legend. I named it that because I, when I do interviews, I want people to go, this guy literally wrote the book on acting. You know what it is, is I have, I have known people that have written books. I have read a lot of books and I, I was like, you know what, the way I teach, I, I have to get this down. Yeah. I have to get this down in print, but it's not, uh, it's not an easy read in this aspect. And I've had people review it and they go, wow, right to the point, right, <laughs> right to the, no fluff. Yeah. No, here's the here's the interesting story that happened in '93, and I, I don't fill it with any of that. Yeah. I wrote this book in in the terms of almost like somebody said, "I'm thinking about being an actor. What what are, what are your thoughts?" Yeah. And I go, "Sit down, right. and I'm going to tell you straight, no BS, yeah. how it is." Yep. And that's the same way I wrote it. I just finally wanted to get it down on on paper of. You know, if, and that's why I call it before you begin, before you begin. If you're even thinking about getting into showbiz, this is what you need to understand. You are going to be judged on everything. Second you walk in that door. So lose that extra weight, get those teeth straightened, get them white, whatever you need to do to stack the odds in your favor. And also understand this, the acting and people, people got on me, you can't say that. And I'm like, yeah. I'm really the guy that adheres to political correctness. Okay. Right. You can but I was like acting is a gypsy lifestyle. Yeah. You will never act in the same place twice. This is not for your convenience. Exactly. You have to acclimate to it. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. Cuz I've done sure I've done a few jobs in Phoenix never in the same place. Right. I've acted in Tucson, Flagstaff, Prescott, Sedona, Yuma, San Diego, LA, Vegas, Utah, you name it. That, that's the lifestyle. So you better be ready to say yes, yeah. get in your car, and go. and go. That's all they want to know. I know one actor that had the opportunity to do a gig reading a teleprompter, which is essentially an electronic script. Yeah. It's right in front of the camera. It's behind glass. I can see the script. I don't even have to memorize it. I just go, hello, and welcome to the wonderful world of Disney. And I just read what's on screen. Exactly. 500 bucks. Right. They were there two hours. Easy money. They called two weeks later and said, we'd love for you to do another one. And the actor said, I can't get it off work. And I said, they'll never hire you again. That's, it. that's all they needed to hear. You know what I mean? That's, that's and that's, that's what I, I say in my book and that 
you're going to be judged in every aspect and it's it's not for the faint of heart i had one review that was like wow that is a gut punch of a book because <laughs> yeah. it's no fluff it's no not at all but you know if, if you think about it that's really what i mean if it's not you it's going to be someone else like it's like, like this is literally what what is being told to these people it's almost like they're holding a mirror to your insecurities yeah yeah and do you have what it takes do you have what it takes to keep going yeah. when you're told no 20 times 50 times 100 when you haven't landed an audition in a year do you have what it takes to keep going because that's what you need yeah. and i tell people all the time before you think about getting in into acting read this book yeah. because otherwise you could be wasting a lot of time a lot of time absolutely man how's it been doing for you good really good i just i literally sold one right before i left oh, nice. yeah yeah nice, they come in every day and when did you drop it um probably i want to say three four weeks ago just pretty recently, pretty recently. and i'm working on this i've got the second book that i'm working on that's about 40 percent done now and then I've got the third book, which is, it's going to be all about sort of the language of film and television and commercial. Yeah, it's, it's because there's a lot, process. there's a lot of terms and freight, you know, we're going to do this shot OTS on a medium. And then, and you, if you don't know that lang, if you know the language, you're going to be that much further ahead. Right. You're going to be one step ahead going, okay, as the actor, I know what shot they're doing and what the framing is going to look like. Right. So I know how to adjust my performance. Yeah. You better know that language, man. You better know that language. If somebody says, okay, we're going to push in on a close up and it's, there's a lot to learn about this business. There's a lot. People just think, oh, it's got to be pretty, right? No, no. There's so much more. There's so much more. And you should want to learn it. You'll be that much more of a dangerous animal if you, if you come to the game prepared instead of being naive. And that's how people get taken advantage of because they're naive. I remember one film that I did that I was so into character and you know when you shoot yeah. like indoors they, they kill the lights they kill the air conditioning and you're like I'm sweltering I'm sweating because they need it stone silent for sound and um, I was a, a ghost a spirit that inhabited a house and there was four or five of us there's a girl and, a, and another guy and an older guy. And yeah. <clears throat> I was, of course, the bad guy. Yeah. And uh, there's a moment where the, the live occupants of the house, this woman and her, and her husband, are lying in bed together. And she feels something. She feels a presence. Yeah. So she sits up in bed and, you know, Dracula, Bella Lugosi style, <laughs> right. off the patio doors, the, the doors come open. And I walk in and I just take my time. And that's the beautiful thing about being an actor when you're older. See, when you're younger and you're an actor, you're full of what I like to call piss and vinegar. Oh, yeah. You go on energy. Okay, this is what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you go, okay, it's like having a puppy in a car. Yeah. Calm down. Right. You gotta but when you're, testosterone level of 800. Yeah, when you're older, when you're, a, when you're a Jack Nicholson, a Dustin Hoffman, a Morgan Freeman, they go on, and Anthony Hopkins, you yeah. take your time. When you take your time, you can get people to hang yep. on every word. And so I came in off the balcony and she's looking at me and the cameraman, other actors are sitting watching and I, I just saunter in. That's a great word. I sauntered in and I stood at the end of the bed and I go, well, 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 and what have we here? And it, it, she took her time, I took my, and it was, there was just a vibe, right. a creepy vibe. And this, meant, this went on for about a minute, minute and a half, the scene. And I go, just remember, I'll be watching. And I disappeared. And I heard the director go cut, and I was like, fuck, that was good, right? Did you feel it? Right, right, right. Woo! Right. Pow! Right. Center field wall. There was just a moment like that where I was like, yeah. I, I, I've had a lot of good moments. I, I'm so appreciative and so thankful. I, did, I was in the movie Rust with Alec Baldwin. Oh, man. Where the lady got accidentally killed. Right. And my greatest apprehension. Holy shit, you were? Yeah, I was one of the deputies. 
because he, he comes back to rescue his 13-year-old grandson, and then they set out after him because he's a retired gunslinger. And uh, my greatest apprehension was, I've seen Alec Baldwin on so many interviews, please don't let him be a jerk. Please don't let him be a jerk. I'm really excited. This is a big Western. I've done a lot of Westerns. Alec Baldwin movie, here we go. He couldn't have been sweeter. Man was joking, laughing, welcoming, accommodating. I mean, he's so nice. And I was just like, oh, thank God. Thank God. So, yeah. I mean, just everybody. It's, I mean, but what was that? What, I mean, I mean, were you literally there? Yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I had done my stuff, and it happened like a week after I left. And I met her, Helena. She was, you know, she was like Tinkerbell. Like five foot nothing, 100 pounds, and Joel, the director, super, super thin, and he got hit in the, I think, the uh, collarbone. collarbone yeah. And then it hit her. Right. But, yeah, it hit and I've had a lot of people ask me about it, because right after it happened, the next day I'm like, looking at my messages going, okay, why is the LA Times, New York Times, and Entertainment Tonight contacting me? What is going on? And everybody wanted a statement. <clears throat> so I asked my agents and I said, what do, what do, they were like, you can say something if you want. Or, and I go, I'd rather just, because there were background actors, extras that were like, I can tell you what happened. I have the whole story. Right. I've got the inside scoop. Did I knock that? My no, I didn't. I got the inside scoop. And I'm like, this guy was 50 feet in the background and wasn't even there that everybody day. Wants their five minutes. And they were coming out and they were like, I felt like this was going to be a Brandon Lee situation. And I was like, oh, stop it. You did not stop it. And so um, I finally, after saying no, 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 like a year, year and a half after it happened, I said uh, one time in a podcast, and I'll say it here too. I go, listen, my, my viewpoint on it is this. Do you know what the job of an actor is? Our job is to show up and know our lines and be pretty. And that's it. That's it. If I need... The wardrobe, somebody's gonna put me in the right wardrobe. Stand here, look there, hold this. That's my job. Nobody hired me or Alec Baldwin because we're professional gunslingers. And what happened was a tragic, terrible accident. I'm sure the man went, bam, whoa, geez. And then people that came after him afterwards, I'm like, you know, it's real easy after the fact. When you see a car crash to say, well, I would have, I would have hit the brakes. Absolutely. I would have turned right. I'm like, you know, don't be a don't be a, a couch quarterback. Everybody does that. And I'm like, you, you don't know what you're going to do in the meantime. That when I met that armorer on that film, all the first thing I thought was, who is this 15 year old girl they hired? Pink and green hair. And yeah. I was taken aback by that. And they were like, yeah, she's the armorer. OK. All right. Is what it is, man. He couldn't have been sweeter, though. All of them have been super nice that I've worked with. All of them. The only guy that was a bit of a a hard derriere was uh, the director of uh, Yellowstone, Taylor Sheridan. Really? Yeah. He wrote a lot of successful movies. You know, they called him the new John Ford, the king of the micro western. He and <clears throat> this is what happens when you have somebody that's so close to the project. He wrote it. He's directing it. Mm. And we got there, I got there at nine in the morning. Yeah. And he said to cast and crew, 150 people standing out here. Nobody's leaving till I get what I want. That's it. Five in the morning the next day I left. Wow. And I was just like, oh my God. The hardest part of that film, that TV show for me was this. I love grilling and I love barbecue. Yeah. And craft services had a grill that they kept going 24 seven. And I'm like, you know how hard it is to act? And I smell them steaks and burgers. Are you kidding me? Right, right. I'm not even thinking about this scene. That show, oh, my God. It was so good. Every time I walk by the guy, you want a hot dog? Want a hamburger? Want a... No, I'm fine. I'm getting diabetes at this point. Stop. The Hulu thing is out. I got a commercial for Honda coming out. I have um, another... Uh, video production I'm doing in December, kind of a diehard spoof for a company. Okay. And then uh, a couple of movies already lined up for next year. Nice, 
My theme song should be this, every day I'm hustling, hustling. Right, right, right. And that's what I tell people. You can't go at this like a, like a part-time occupation. This has to be a full-time obsession. You, you get a job, and I used to relish that when I was younger. I'd get a, I, yeah, I got an audition, <laughs> yeah. I'd get landed, oh, got a call back in two weeks, woo. Oh, I got it, yeah, I shoot it in two weeks, yeah. And then I just re revel in it, and then I thought, wow, man, a month and a half has gone by. I'm wasting time here. And so now it's like, I land that, great, I put it on the calendar, cool, thank you, I'll see you then. And then I keep submitting and submitting and auditioning and auditioning, and, and they come in all the time, man. At least when you least when you least expect it, they pop in. So it's fun. Every day is Christmas. <music> Blessed. Made me get emotional for a minute. <laughs> Blessed. Because it's there's a lot of people that watch what you do and want what you want what you got. And it takes a special kind of person to sit back and, and say, I'm okay to be in the stands. I'm okay to be your cheerleader. So blessed because I've seen a lot of my family give up a lot of themselves and their lives so that I could, I could pursue this. So that's why if something big comes along, they'll be first in line to receive. So yeah, blessed. Very, very, very blessed. <laughs> See that, man? You made me cry. That's what, <laughs> that's what we do, man. Bro, You're like, that's what we're going to push in on his eyes. Right, right. That question, that's always the one. It was true, though, you know. It comes from good space, man. It's like that's we want everyone to remember, though, especially shit, the past three years that we've had in life. I know, I know. Yeah, it's, it's, you know what I mean? It's just good. It's good to remember that a lot of people you get lost in the in, in the sauce, man, with all the, the the negativity around politics. What do you name it? Right. It's just good to remember those things. So, yeah, it's 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 I have seen. You know, it's it's firsthand watching those give up. They sacrifice themselves for you. And I have seen that a lot with my family. They're excited for you. And they cheer you on, and then you realize, man, they have, they have given up uh, so much of their life so that I could pr pr pursue this and for, for, to gain nothing out of it except, you know, their support and love. Yeah. So, no, I, know, man. I don't know. I think maybe I'm that rare kind of actor that I'm, I see it. I see it. I appreciate it. I appreciate every moment. I appreciate getting the opportunity to do this. You know, I don't feel deserving of it or owed it. I just feel, I feel, I'm so afraid these birds flying overhead. Uh, I feel lucky and, and blessed by it all. You know, I've, this goes back to what we talked about earlier. You know, you said you got a great resume and credit and you know what? I'm like, I do. But you know who that matters to? Me. Right. And that's about it. Because exactly. just like they say a boxer is only good as his last fight, an actor, you're only good as your last movie. That's true. I still got it every day. I got to prove myself. I could win an Academy Award and an Emmy and people would go, my God, you won an Academy Award and an Emmy? Wow. So um, what can you bring to our movie? Right. And you're like, are you kidding me? Really? Really? At this point, really? You have to. You can't, and you can't walk in skating on that. You can't, hey, don't you know who I am? I was on this and that and this and that. Because nobody cares except me. Exactly. So you just kind of, eh, is what it is. Everybody, I'm Sean Dillingham, and that was my five. And I'm now going up those stairs. Right there. Dramatically. Oh, wait, but first, a lighter. <laughs> and there you have it man sean thank you so much again for blessing our platform man and uh you know hanging out with us this was really really incredible you know i started watching this is us in 2018 my mother and i were watching and we really gravitated so heavy towards it because it's, it's just is it's, it's 
there's a lot of relatable, you know, you know, situations in that show, you know, and um, I just, I just thought it was just an amazing, just an amazing series. And um, I haven't seen Better Call Saul yet. Um, obviously, I know it's the prequel to Breaking Bad. I've seen Breaking Bad, but um, I needed, I definitely need to check that out. But Yellowstone, my man, that is like hands down one of the greatest shows ever made. And the fact that you got to be a part, a chance to be a part of that, and you know, work with Kevin Costner, I mean, that's that's just incredible in itself, man. Um, so salute to you, my brother, you know, and uh, thank you again, man. You know, this was we had a really really good time, man. You know, it's just a lot of good laughs, and uh, you know, I'm just so happy that you were able to reach out to us. And, uh, you know, we were able to make this happen, man, you know, um, so I wish you nothing but the best and nothing but continued success and everything that you have going forward. And uh, thank you again, man. Make sure you guys are following him on social media. And shout out to my brother, Jimmy Nelson, on that camera. Make sure you guys subscribe to that YouTube channel. Tell a friend to tell a friend. All right. Well, this was definitely one for the books. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, though. Till next time, stay tuned. Stay blessed. Stay healthy. A lot of shit going around right now. <laughs> and just give me five, y'all. Everything you get, you got the world.